I'm Robbie, and this is Thomas. We had driven across the country to meet up with Brian and Andrew to hike the incredible Lost Coast in Northern California. First, there was just one final thing we had left to do. Climb to the 10,000 foot peak of Mount San Antonio, or as it's more commonly known, Mount Baldy. This is the finale for the Robbie Thomas road trip. So let's just give it one more final blush. <laughs> I've never seen a bear out here. Oh shoot. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. That is a big bear. So our trail is gonna start at 6,000? Give or take a few hundred. So if you had parked at that first trailhead, you would have more elevation to do, right? Oh yeah. Are we cheating? I mean, it's still like 4,000 feet elevation gain in 10 miles, so I don't want to say we're cheating. So we're here. This is Manker Flats. All those cars we saw earlier, they're down here near Ice House Canyon. We're gonna go up Falls Road a little bit, check out San Antonio Falls. They're gonna take the Baldy Bowl Trail. It's only three and a half miles from here up here, but it's a very steep three and a half miles. For every mile you go up, you go over a thousand feet. And then we're gonna take the Devil's Backbone all the way to top of the notch, which should be around here. And then we're gonna take the service road all the way back down to Mount Baldy Road. Let's do it. If you go this way, and this is my favorite way to go, you can see all the rocks where there's just no tree line up there. That's called the Baldy Bowl. In the wintertime, there are different routes you can take up the Baldy Bowl when there's snow. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not try mountaineering this mountain <laughs> unless you've got the experience and equipment. I've actually seen people fall and I've seen people flown out of here and die wow. off this mountain. Woo! Wow. There isn't a ton of water in the San Gabriels, which is the mountains right next to Los Angeles. Um, and this is one of the few spots you can see it. In the summertime, at least. Beautiful. You okay? <laughs> yeah, this is, so this is how you get acclimated, is you, you breathe in through your nose and then you exhale sharply. Through really? Your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were joking. <laughs> no. All right, this is Thomas? Yes. Thomas? Hi, uh, my name is Thomas. I just want to shout out to uh, Josh and Charlie. Uh, can't wait to backpack with you uh, next year. Awesome. He's real Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got fake Thomas I'm over the here. Fake Thomas. <laughs> I think all of that Denver elevation did help because I'm not struggling like I was on Willow Lake. Then again, we're only at 7,000 right now, so I might start struggling eventually. <laughs> it's the yucca plant. I always thought it was interesting when you go hiking up in the mountains, these things become so much bigger than they are. Yeah, when huge. You're, you're down in the desert. Right, let's go. Can I give a shout out to anyone? Uh, no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 1.39 miles so far, 45 minutes. 
7,300 feet of elevation. So far, so good. Beautiful, beautiful hike. You know, as I go hiking more and more with Sierra, I noticed that a lot of the birds and the animals that I see, uh, most of the time, they make a different call out when I'm hiking with Sierra. So whenever we go hiking in the mountains, I hear marmots chirping. Whenever we go hiking in the right, plains, right. we hear prairie dogs chirping. Yep. And now here we're hearing uh, California blue jays. I think that's what they're called. Look like it, they're Making definitely blue. Different types of uh, uh, chirps than I'm usually, I usually hear them say. Yes, so this is the deadliest predator. Yes. Yeah, the marmots up on Willow Lake back in Colorado were chirping really loud. One thing that pretty consistently surprises me is how quickly the mountains feel like they get way closer. When you first start, they look impossibly far. And then before long, they look quite close. But the reverse is also true especially when you start getting into false peak territory and you're just like, oh, it's just up there. Yeah. Then you give every, you give, you know, a hundred percent just to get to that top and you're like, oh, it's actually another mile. <laughs> Yeah, the elevation gain is a little bit difficult, but honestly not too bad, and the trail itself is quite walkable. And it is stunningly beautiful. Perfect weather today, too. I have found since yesterday that California has amazing weather. <laughs> People have always told me that, but I haven't really experienced it that much firsthand. So it looks like Sierra Ski Hut is our first waypoint. Ooh, I'm looking forward to breakfast. I have stockpiled so many hotel breakfast snacks. <laughs> I got like four granola bars, two muffins, a fig bar. <laughs> You're good, come on, let's go. Oh, she's thirsty? You thirsty, tired. dog? She might be tired because she was at day play yesterday, but. Excellent. That was way faster than I thought it would be. Yeah, the next part I think is the toughest part. Look at this. Blueberry or maybe chocolate chip? Uh, I'll take the blueberry. If that's okay with you. Yep. <laughs> There's lots of blueberry. Oh, I see. Oh, this is the squished one. But I'll take it. Let's do this. She looks totally disinterested. Yeah, she's very sleepy right now. Nice, but this is a good, sometimes people just hike up here and stay here for a couple minutes and come back down. Mm. But for me, this is like a really good halfway point. So I can actually see where we're going. There's a guy on there right now. And then up here is where you saw somebody fall. Yeah, so I took a mountaineering course and we practiced like on bunny hills up in the bowl. But I saw a guy fall down just along that tree line there. I wasn't sure if it was like a glissade or he did that unintentionally until I saw the streak of blood in the snow. Ooh. Luckily I was part of this REI course and so they had people there who were paramedics just for, for us and they had like a life alert sound so someone signaled to a rescue helicopter. They came in, they made the rescue like right in front of us. He survived, fortunately, but unfortunately two people died on the mountain that same day. Weird. Yeah, we would, see, we would see some other rescue. Operations? Yeah, so that might have been one of those ones that didn't make it. Okay, I'm ready. I think we need to go? Yep, let's go. See, are you ready? Does not look like it. Wow, the nature of the trail changed completely. Oh yeah, no. So this is 
what? The uh, FU part of the trail. <laughs> Let's go, come on. Up here, we're gonna kind of hug the top of the ridge here. It's gonna be called Devil's Backbone until we get to that little building over there. And that's the top of the notch where we're gonna have some food, hopefully. Ooh. All right. How would you say Sierra's doing? Sierra's doing fine. She's not running up the hill and she's kind of looking to take some breaks in the shade here. But I think the reason for that is she's at date play yesterday. So she spent all day yesterday playing with other dogs. Oh but she's so good, she's got her booties. Let's go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow, this is very steep. Yeah, this is, you see why I called it that part of the trail? Yep. Very difficult. Glad to be done with that. So there might be one more part that's kind of like that, but I never remember it being as difficult as that. Yeah, that was a pretty short, super intense uphill. So far I'm feeling surprisingly good. I think a big part of it for me too is that I'm not carrying a heavy backpack. Every time I can lighten my load, it is such a relief. Good. Yep. There's no camping up here, right? There is. Oh, there is? Yeah. Nice campsite down there. Years ago when I lived here, I thought we could do this as a backpacking trip. Make it up to there, then hike another spot, and then work our way down. But it would have been a pretty short episode. It's only 10 miles. I can see why this trail's so popular. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's really not that difficult. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, look at that view. I can't get over the weather, dude. It's cool and very comfortable, even though the sun is like bearing down on us. Just the lack of humidity and those breezes, even in the sun, it's beautiful. Wow. Wow. You can see this is the trail we'll be hiking on later today. You can see some ants on there right now. Okay, 3.5 miles hiked, 2,500 feet of elevation gain, and currently 9,000 feet elevation. Thomas, I think we're still in the FU part of the hike. I don't think we've got out of it yet. This is very vertical. <laughs> Looks like we got some options up ahead. I'll let you pick. I think they all go to the same place though. Go left, it's easier, love. Go that way, I'll go this way. And your idea of coming up this way more and more. Looking at people going down, I'm like, yikes. Not just the steepness, but the slippery. Yeah, slippery that's where street. Sierra is struggling the most. Without the boots, without the boots on. You have to protect your paws, but she doesn't have as much traction. Mm. Thomas, not to criticize your video skills, but your videos did not prepare me for this <laughs> at all. Oh, you've never done this one on video. No, that's what I've been saying. Well, to criticize my listening skills, none of your videos prepared me for this hike because you didn't make a video of this hike. Mm -hmm. 
I'll take it. That was some brutal uphill. <laughs> this is quite comparable to Mount Kumatori. Very steep uphill, a lot of sharp switchbacks. It kind of the similar last leg where it's very steep. Woo. I never appreciated how bad Kumatori was until you said that. Yeah, it was rough. The section from that lodge to here, brutal. Very difficult. This is also a Thomas and Sierra pace. This is not a Robbie, Brian, and Andrew pace. <laughs> We've done 4.4 miles in less than three hours. I will say though that at least right now in this season, this is not very intimidating. Like a lot of mountains you go to, they seem super daunting, but this one seems kind of friendly almost. Still difficult, don't get me wrong. Oh, we're close. We are very close. I see the top. people I've ever seen on a mountaintop ever. <laughs> Great hike, great hike. Amazing view too. You can see everything up here. I think we drove in from this direction. One of those roads out there and we could see Baldy in the distance. All right, we are definitively off the summit now, but we've got some shade and Sierra's very happy. So uh, reapply sunscreen. <laughs> I've had these turkey and cheese sandwiches since before we left Denver. <laughs> I really need to finish them today. It's actually kind of risky at this point anyway. <laughs> you got signal up here? Yeah. So I was pretty sure, but that highway is the one that we came in on? Yeah, that's Highway 15. Okay. And then you can follow with your eye Highway 15 until it gets lost in the desert out there. But that's the Mojave. And that's the one we were taking on all the way from Vegas. If you look over that way, on the left, you'll see a bald mountain out that way. It's a little bit lighter colored. Everything else is blue. And it looks like it's kind of higher than this one. It's because it is. That's San Gorgonio. And to the right, that's San Jacinto. And San Jacinto is a mountain that kind of covers Palm Springs and Palm Desert. And you can take a tram to the top of that. My legs are utterly covered in dirt. Yeah. my favorite part of the trail. Only problem is because we went up that side first, now we don't get any shade for the next hour or so. Well, at least we can see where we're going for the pretty much yep. entire way. All right, let's go, come on. <laughs> There's a pretty fun sense of camaraderie when you head down a mountain and you see people struggling up the mountain, just like you were doing like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it's just that into the mountain hike trudge. Yo, I know we're exposed, but so far I'm loving this downhill. This is fantastic. You put in the effort when you go up and you relax on your way down. Yeah. This is the hardest part though. Once we get down to that part, we're all good.
trying to decide how I feel about being able to see the entire trail that I'm about to do. I think on the way out, it's a little bit easier. Right now, looking down at this, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, no problem, it will be there in no time. Right here, you can look down, you can see where we parked our cars down there. I am really liking the way that this trail is looking up ahead. Wow, we made some crazy progress in a very short amount of time. Downhill is great. Downhill is the way to go, baby. It's cool, you can see the trail we were on earlier down there and how it goes, reaches up into the, uh, the tree line there and kind of hugs all the way up there. You don't think it's as hard when you're standing right here, but it's so much harder. I think this direction is harder because you have to go down that steep way. I would much rather go up very slowly and have a much smoother gradient down, but it depends on the person. These parts of the trail, they probably look more scary than they actually are. This path is super easy and flat and nice and worn in, so you have very little risk of falling as long as you're paying attention. This was uh, a lot like what Mount Whitney looked like at the very end. Just a bunch of rock scree, but the trail was not this smooth. Yo, I love this section of the trail. This is great. I'm so glad we saved this for the end. This would have given me a false sense of hope. I would have gotten my hopes way up like, oh, this trail's not gonna be bad at all. Then we got to that monster that we just went down. The steepest grade down we'll go again is gonna be near the, near the notch. So it's deceivingly close, but you can see the uh, top of the notch hut right there and the surface road that zigzags all the way down. But we still got a ways to go. This is where we get into the devil's backbone portion of the trail. Mm. It's not nearly as bad as the knife's edge. Thank God. This is the devil's backbone? This is the devil's backbone, yeah. That would be a pretty nasty fall on either side. Yeah, this is another one of those parts that's pretty intimidating just from the looks of it. But if you go slow and steady, you're totally fine. The path itself is quite easy. There's just no safety net, if you will. Wow. This is also the devil's backbone here. I just realized something absolutely devastating for my morale. That hut is not the end of our hike. <laughs> no, that's just a resting point. Oh man, I gotta recalibrate my brain. This is where we made it in our video when there was a blizzard here. And we thought we were pretty close. Yeah. We were so wrong. Not even close. It's not even that peak. It's not that one either. It's on the other side. Now apparently you can take that ski lift down, but unfortunately no dogs. Although the ski lift is not moving, so maybe you can't right now anyway. I'm gonna have a quick sit. <laughs> oh. oh, that's pretty nice. Wow, ski lifts are terrifying. Doesn't even look like it's attached up there. I still have never been skiing. Maybe one day. 
Seems a little terrifying though. It's 12.39, four hours and 42 minutes of hiking, 6.92 miles, 3,600 feet of elevation gain. The midday sun is substantially hotter than the early day sun. Take what I said earlier about the weather being super nice with a grain of salt. Although it's quite cool with the breeze. It's just when you sit there directly in the sun, it's pretty hot. Overall, a very, very pleasant hiking weather. Side. This is my first time on this ski slide. This is, did you look up? Whoa, whoa. There's a reason I never take this going up because it's just so, so steep. Yeah. Yeah, like we said, we've never skied, but this, wow, you must get going really fast. Almost there, Sierra, keep going. You got this, let's go, come on. Let's go. Here. Is here. Go. I love the mixture of modern civilization with the trail. It just feels like such an adventure and like a sense of discovery when you're on a trail and then you come out into a civilized area. Oh baby, that is an oasis in the distance. I think most of all, I wanna get a cold drink. Oh yeah, this is exciting. I'm guessing these shoot snow out. Gotta be, right? Shooting snow onto the side of a mountain doesn't seem like something that should be possible, but I guess it is. Oh, there's a ski lift running. Maybe that takes you all the way to the bottom. Mm. Am I about to ride this ski lift down and abandon Thomas and Sierra? We made it. I was gonna say, Sierra deserves some cooked chicken breast. Yeah, please have some of that. Some of this bread. I'm gonna dress up my hot dog. Oh, it's a good bun. Got a little seasoning on it. Do you like Swiss cheese? I don't love Swiss cheese. There you go. I should wash my hands, actually. <laughs> Here. And stick some mayo on there. Can you watch here while I wash my hands? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna improvise a cheese sandwich here. Ah, ah, come on. Come on. Yeah. My mayonnaise. Forever trapped. A disappointment, and I'm still disappointed. living right there. Okay, the ski lift is 20 bucks. You can't take Sierra, so I'll just walk with them. It wouldn't save them that much time if I brought the car, but boy, that does look pretty sweet. Well, the walk down doesn't look very hard either. I am satisfied. You are satisfied? Okay. Yeah. Let's just enjoy this one. This is more of like a walk down. Yeah, it looked like it. Yeah, but it's a walk. Okay. I'm afraid to ask Thomas, but I think this road is what we're doing. And that's a little, a little bit demoralizing. Fortunately, we're making really good progress already, so I'm hoping it's not gonna be too bad. Is this bad, Thomas? This road. Okay, he said it's great. He's probably lying to me.
feels pretty good. This is not sweat, by the way. This is water. That is a relief. Not just getting to the car, but walking on this ground. Oh, it's fantastic. Six hours, 25 minutes, 10.34 miles hiked, 3,648 feet of elevation gain. That's a heck of a day hike. Okay, that's where we started this morning. Wow, that seems like a lifetime ago. Actually, in absolute hours, it wasn't that long ago, but certainly feels like forever ago. Oof. And that's the end of Robbie and Thomas's road trip adventure. Now we have to just live with each other for a few more times. <laughs> the guys come. Yeah, we're going to be in the hotel for a few more days. Then Brian and Andrew are coming into town. And we got a whole nother adventure after that. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for joining us on this Journey West road trip. If you enjoyed it, check out our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. Patrons get early access to the main episodes, bloopers, commentaries, live streams, and at certain tiers, you can get your name in the credits. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you very soon in the grand finale, The Lost Coast. So for those of you who don't know, I am half Chinese. Thomas went to China for a year. Yeah, no, like... Sorry, sorry. Thomas went to China for a week or two. Give us some of that Chinese. I'm going to say it, but I mean it with the utmost respect, and I'm doing my best to make all the pronunciations right, and it's going to be wrong. Okay. But, uh, let's see. Uh, Wabuhui Shong Zheng Wen. Okay. Uh, Jiga Jiao Shen Ma. Not bad. Uh, Shui. Yep. Xie Xie. Oh, Xie Xie. I almost feel like running up but I'd feel real stupid if I got a heart attack right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other side definitely did not feel as intimidating and demoralizing. Really? Yeah. Oh, just uh, if I'm looking up, it just looks scary. No, no, the, the side we did. Oh, looks more? Less. I'm saying that side looks less intimidating. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you said that side looks more intimidating. No, no, no. <laughs> Oxygen levels in the brain are low for both of us. <laughs>